All right, now we're going to actually form images by these lenses. Three concepts, uh, for one for converging uh, lenses, one for diverging lenses, and then one to state where real images are formed for mirrors and lenses to kind of put it all together with combining with the last chapter. Demonstration first. Today we're going to demonstrate the images formed by a lens. This is a lens with a 10 centimeter focal length. It's a converging lens. That so means it's fatter in the middle and thinner along, uh, along its edges. And it has a focal length of 10 centimeters. So you can see here and here between 10 and 20, that would be the, the focal length of this lens. You can also see the same distance between this 10 and here's zero. And what I have here is an object that has an arrow pointing up and an arrow pointing to the left. And I want to find the location of the image produced by this object through this lens. I'm going to start by looking at uh, object distances that are greater than the focal length. So my first one that I want to look at is an object distance, meaning a distance between the object and the lens of 12 and a half centimeters, this distance right here. And if we slide the, uh, the screen here, we can see that there's an image that's, that's out of focus here, out of focus here, and at about uh, this location here, it looks like it's in focus. We can also uh, determine the magnification of the image by first determining the height of the object. So this object looks to be about four centimeters tall. And the image looks to be about 16 centimeters tall. But it's inverted. The object is upright. It has an arrow pointing up. The image has an arrow pointing down. And um, so the image height, we would say, would be a negative 16 centimeters compared to the object height of plus 4 centimeters. Magnification is the image height divided by the object height. And in that case, it would be uh, negative 16 centimeters because it's inverted, divided by 4 centimeters, the upright object, gives a, a magnification of a negative 4. I've shown that value here on the chart, the object distance of 12 and a half centimeters. And uh, we can work out the image distance of 50 centimeters from the thin lens equation, uh, knowing uh, the object distance of 12.5 centimeters, the focal length of 10 centimeters, and then solving for the image distance, which works out to be 50, which exactly agrees with the experiment that we've done here. The lens is at 12 and a half centimeters, and the image is at 62 and a half centimeters, and that's a distance of uh, 50 centimeters. So we got a big image here magnified uh, with the object distance being just a little greater than the focal length. If we move the lens out to 15 centimeter mark, the object distance now becomes 15 centimeters. And we can work it out uh, that the image distance has to be 30 centimeters. So that'll be 15 plus 30 is 45 centimeters. And sure enough, it comes into to nice focus there. In this case, you can see that the image is smaller. It's closer and therefore smaller. And in this particular case, it is um, about 8 centimeters tall. The magnification is minus 2. And again, this minus 2, the minus sign means that the image is inverted. If we move out to twice the focal length, so we put this lens at the 20 centimeter mark. 
it's 20 centimeters from the object, then this is one, two focal lengths away. The image, you can work out, and it's on the chart, will be at 40 centimeters. And now the magnification is exactly minus one. This image is the same size as the object. Four centimeters here, and four centimeters there. Take one more step out to 30 centimeters. And this one gives um, an image distance of 15. So I'm gonna expect to see a nice sharp image 15 centimeters uh, away from the lens. And sure enough, it is sharp at that spot. Here it's, here it's fuzzy, here it's sharp. Right there at the 45 centimeter mark, we get a nice sharp image and a magnification of minus one half. So the bottom line here of what we've learned so far is that if the lens is between one focal length and two focal lengths away from the object, then the image is going to be magnified and inverted. And also, the image is real. If the lens is outside two focal lengths away from the, the object distance is, is more than two focal lengths away from the, if the lens is more than two focal lengths away from the object, then the image is reduced. And again, it's still real, um, but, and it's also inverted. So for all of the cases we looked at so far, the image is real and inverted. And you might say, well, uh, what happens if we're inside the focal length? So if we place this lens inside of one focal length away from the, the object. Can't get the camera in here, so what I'm going to do is to just remove the lens and show you what happens uh, with the overhead camera. So here we've got an object distance that might be about, so this, this now, this piece of paper with the writing on it is the actual object instead of this illuminated reticle. And the, the object distance is a distance between the lens and the piece of paper. And now, at this point, we're looking at a, a, an object distance of about two centimeters. If I move it up to five, I think you'll see that the writing is becoming larger. It's becoming more magnified. And then at about seven or eight centimeters, even more magnified. And then once you get to 10 centimeters, which is the focal length of the lens, and things get blurry, and it reduces to the case that we had before. This is exactly what you see here. Uh, if you work out with an object distance of five centimeters, this equation gives an image distance of negative 10. And that negative sign tells you that the image is virtual and not real. With a magnification of plus two, if you noticed here, the, um, the print here and the image through the magnifying glass, they're both, the image through the magnifying glass is upright. That's why we get a positive number here. And as we moved uh, the, I'm calling this a magnifying glass because that's what it's acting like. It's acting just like a magnifying glass like this. Um, as we move that magnifying glass further and further from the piece of paper, the image gets bigger and bigger. And we can see that here. As we approach that object distance of 10, the magnification gets bigger and bigger and bigger. At 10, uh, if the object distance is 10, we've got a 10 here and a 10 here, and the only way to satisfy this equation is by putting in an infinite distance for the, uh, um, for the position of the image. And that is, in fact, what happens when you have the lens um, at its focal length the image is, is at infinity. On a camera, that's, uh, that's where you'll, um, you'll image a distance 
the distance between the lens of the camera and the, the film or the array um, appro gets closer and closer to that focal length as the uh, distance get, approaches infinity. That's the lenses. Okay. You might have recognized those equations that we used in the demo. They are, in fact, uh, the thin lens equations, which are exactly identical to the mirror equations that we used in the last chapter. So uh, the next step is to look at the principal rays that you can use in order to find these images. For a converging lens, it makes sense to make the, use these three principal rays. Uh, the one that go a paraxial ray leaving the object. So that's this one here, paraxial, passes through the lens, and by definition, that ray must pass through the focal point on the other side of the lens. Uh, another way is to, is to take a ray from the tip of the object, go through the focal point first instead of second. Then it comes out here, hits the lens, and becomes a paraxial ray on the other side. How do you know that? You know it by reversing the direction. Because if we come in as paraxial from this side, we know it'll have to pass through the focal point. Ray reversal. And then a third ray passing right smack dab through the middle of the lens, where the walls of the lens are parallel to each other. As long as the lens is thin, and that's why we'll, we'll refer to the, these equations as the thin lens equations, then that will look like a ray that goes through a slab, like we talked about a couple of sections ago. It'll just go straight on through with a little bit of uh, deviation, but we can ignore that as long as the lens is thin. That'll be the third one. For diverging um, rays, we can look at a paraxial ray, we can look at one that will head toward the focal point on the other side, and then will get diverted and become paraxial. So on, on the left side of this, this uh, diverging lens, it's not paraxial. On the right side, it is paraxial, but its extension from the left side over to the right side goes through the focal point. And then three, the, um, the ray that passes right straight, three, straight through the middle. So let's do a couple of uh, concepts. Let's see if we can do these. Draw principal rays to locate and characterize the image. And this is similar to the ones that we did for mirrors. So you've already got some experience with this. And this is really fun. It's just fun to do these uh, diagrams. And um, so I hope you enjoy it. So we're going to locate and characterize the image. Real virtual, upright inverted, enlarged to reduced, unmagnified, produced by a converging lens with the object at least two focal lengths from the lens. Okay, so this is my principal axis and this is my converging lens. And this is uh, my focal point. And this is two focal points away. Or two focal lengths away. Okay, so this is the focal length on this side. So we're looking at an object that's outside two of these. Now you might remember from the, um, from the mirror equations, we talked about the focal point and then the center of curvature. We don't have a center of curvature, but twice the distance of the focal length plays the same kind of role as the center of curvature does for mirrors. So we're going to put our object out here. Let's look at principal rays. Let's look at a paraxial ray coming parallel. It hits the lens. What does it do? By definition, passes through the focal point on the other side. Let's look at the ray that starts here and goes through the focal point and ask what it does on the other side. By ray reversal, we know that on the other side, it has to be paraxial. And uh, a third is to go straight through the middle of the lens. So are these rays converging anywhere? And the answer is yes. So if this is the object, and then this is going to be the image. Let's characterize the image. 
Do the actual rays pass through the image? Yeah, they sure do. We don't have to extend them out. Therefore, it must be a real image. Is the image upright or inverted? Well, here's an object that's above the axis. The image is below the axis, the principal axis. Therefore, it is inverted. Does it look to be enlarged or reduced? Is the size of this image, the height of that guy, uh, less or more than the height of the object? It looks to be less, so it looks like it's reduced. So that's what we get in that particular case. This is, in fact, what you see with a camera lens. When an object is at least two focal lengths from a converging lens, the image is real, inverted, and reduced. And um, so here's the object, passes through this lens, there's a, a real inverted image on the sensor, the CCD array or the old fashioned um, film or whatever it is. That's how you cam capture an image with the camera. Note that each point on the object corresponds to a different point on the image. This is important. This is what I didn't understand until I got to graduate school. If you look, here we've drawn rays for a point at the top of the object. I suppose this is a, a mountain that you're trying to take a picture of. So maybe this is the peak of the mountain. Well, what about halfway up the mountain? Well, you're going to draw rays from there, and they're going to come to focus at a different point on the image. So each point on the object corresponds to an corris a corresponding distinct point on the image. So when we're collecting light here with the CCD array or whatever electronics is used to capture that light, we're getting at this point only light that left the tip of the object. And when we're looking at this point, we're only getting light that left the middle of the object. That's how you can get an image. What happens if you remove this lens? So it's gone now. So what kind of an image do we get on the camera? Well, let's look at it. I've got light coming from here. Comes through, there's no lens. So light from the tip of the object, from the top of the mountain, is hitting everywhere on the, uh, on the, on the film. Well, all the light from here, from the middle, halfway up the mountain, it's going to be hitting on the image here too. So at each point on the image, in the image plane right here, you're getting light from all points on the object. Well, that's embarrassing because there's no way to tell and there's no way to make an image. So what you'll get on your screen, on your imaging device, is just gray mush. It's the lens that allows this image to form where there's a one, two, one correspondence between points on the object and points on the image. And without this, you get no image. It's the way the eye works as well. You've got light coming in, that lens and the other uh, optical pieces that we talk, we'll talk about in just a second. What they do is they form an image on your retina with each point out here that you're looking at getting focused and imaged at a different point in the retina. So those cells those retinal cells can detect the color of each point uh, of the image that you, of the object that you're looking at. All right. 
Draw principal rays to locate and characterize the image. Okay, so now we're gonna have between one and two focal lengths from the lens. Okay, here's a lens. One, two, one, I guess you'd be right right here, two, All right, so now we're between 2F and F. Here's our object. Let's start drawing rays. We can do this. That's a paraxial ray, comes off parallel to the principal axis, passes through the lens and through the focal point. No big deal. What about this one that goes down through this part of the focal point? and then one through the middle of the lens. Looks like we're getting an image that is, sorry, real, because the light rays actually pass through it. Don't have to use extensions. Uh, is it upright or inverted? You say, well, it's inverted. It's upside down. But it looks like this image is gonna be bigger than the object. Sure enough, it is. Now it's going to be enlarged. And um, so that's what we get in this case. It looks very similar. The only thing that changed is that the image is enlarged instead of reduced. In fact, uh, one thing in the part of the uh, demo video that I didn't show that I skipped over is that if you actually put the object right here at this 2F point, then the image is exactly the same height, though inverted as the object. It's unmagnified. All right, uh, so one example of this is um, a projector screen. So we've got an object, you put in the slides in, a, in an old-fashioned slide projector, you put them in upside down. Why is that? Because the image is, you need the image to be right side up and the image is inverted. So you have to start off with it inverted in order for it to be upright by the time you've got it projected on a screen. Same thing with computer projectors now. Um, the object between one focal, uh, the focal length and twice the focal length, you get a real image and it's magnified. So that's the whole idea with a projector. You wanna get a big image, it's, it's enlarged. Okay, uh, third case of this particular concept within one focal length of the lens. Let's look at this one. Now this one is truly different. Principal axis, I'm gonna put the focal point a little further away. And I'm gonna put an object right about here and ask where the image will be. The same thing we did before. Uh, paraxial ray, boom, boom. All right, happy day. What about um, a ray that goes along this line from this focal point to the top of this object? So let's extend the lens out a little further to make sure it goes through the lens. It's coming out here it's gonna come out parallel like that. By, by reversal of, um, by ray reversal, if we brought one in this way, then it would have to pass through the focal point. All right, so we've got two. And um, let's do the third one right through the middle of the lens. And it just goes straight on through. So where do these guys appear to be converging? Well, they're certainly not converging over here. They're diverging. But if we extend them backward it looks like we're going to get an image right here. So tell me about that image. Real or virtual? Well you say it's got to be virtual Dr. Edwards because I had to use ray extensions to get back to where the image is. The, the actual light rays don't pass through it, and they don't come from, they appear to come from this point. When we're looking at this, here's your eye. When you're looking at this light ray, these light rays, your eye doesn't know there's a lens there. It thinks the image is over here. 
because it just extends these, these rays over. Okay, it's virtual. Is it upright or inverted? Well, here's the object. It's above the axis. Here's the image. It's also above the axis. So it is upright. And then finally, um, looks magnified, doesn't it? It looks bigger. So it's enlarged slash magnified. So that, this is the one that we saw in the demo video where we had the lens where we put the object and we used a piece of paper, the writing on the piece of paper, inside the focal length. And this is the whole idea of a magnifying glass. So here's another diagram of the same thing. You see a virtual image out here. These diagrams are great, but I would like you to be able to draw them so you can understand it. And so if you're magnifying some print on a, on a paper, you get a magnification like that. And as you bring this uh, magnifying glass further and further from the piece of paper, this is actually a way that you can tell if you take your old, um, and take the magnifying glass out of your parents' house or whatever, um, and you, you, you bring it further and further and further from the piece of paper. As soon as that image gets humongous and, and then disappears, you know that's the focal length of the magnifying glass. Okay, so that we use uh, magnifying glasses all the time to be able to, to see our work a little bit better. All right, let's do a diverging lens. And you say, wow, we have to do a diverging lens now. It sounds like a lot of work. And it turns out there's only one case for the diverging lens. It's just like a um, concave lens in the, and a convex lens in the sense that it's really easy. It's kind of boring, actually. So let's do a diverging lens. It's thinner in the middle, and fatter near the outside. All right. We're still going to worry about a focal point here and a focal point here because we need to be able to know where everything is. Here's my object. Let's start off with the simplest possible. And yeah, that's supposed to be parallel. Let's try another, have another try. All right, that's roughly parallel. It's paraxial ray. Now, what does that one do? Does it bend toward this focal point? And you say, well, no, not quite. Because it actually bends away. But how does it bend away? It bends away along this line. So that ray goes off like that. So its extension comes down to this focal point. All right, another easy one is just to go straight through the middle of this lens. Okay, actually these two are all that we really need in order to find an image. Are these two guys, these two rays coming through the lens, are they converging or diverging? You say they're diverging. It doesn't look like they're gonna converge anywhere. So what we're gonna hope for is that their extensions back into here will converge somewhere, and sure enough, they do. So we're going to see an image. That is virtual, upright, and reduced. That's always true. No matter where you put the object away from a diverging lens, the image will be virtual, upright, and reduced. So this, with a diverging lens, you're looking at print here that's big on the page, it's actually gonna make it smaller. So it's not really that useful of a device. <laughs> you really don't wanna use that for a magnifying glass because it has just the opposite effect. And here's a diagram that we just, um, that we just showed. All right, 2611, Say, state where real images are formed for mirrors and lenses. Mirrors form real images on the same side of the mirror as the object. Remember, here's for mirrors. We have um, an object right here. And uh, if we had an object that's between the center of curvature and the focal point, we ended up with a real image that was inverted, but it's on the same side of the mirror. 
object and the image are on the same side of the mirror. Well, for lenses, we're not in Kansas anymore, and if you're going to get a real object, a real image, then it's going to be on the opposite side of the lens.